B with Mr. Louis St. George. We are from West Coast Swing Online.com and Country Online.com. Your home for social dancing in general. So we're pulling up our uh, live feed. So if you guys don't know what you're getting into, this is going to be fun. I've threatened to do this for a long time. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Mr. Louis St. George is one of the most prolific DJs around. We're going to discuss his credentials and his background and uh, we will go ahead and get to some questions. So if you guys have some questions, please shoot them up. But we're just basically gonna, as we say in our neighborhood, shoot the shit. Shoot the shit. Yeah. So if you're from New England, you'll understand, shoot the shit. Um, by the way, shout out to Whole Sopple Brewing Company next door to us Not here. sponsored by Whole Sopple. Not but we sponsored. Wish, but we wish they would sponsor local us. But it's local, local small, small business, business that's being affected during this uh, trying negative time. time, trying time. So is everyone good, YouTube and Facebook? Awesome, awesome. I'm pulling up our live feed right here. I also Propel, but again, not sponsored by Propel, but good stuff. <laughs> good deal. Pulling up, off we go. So, um, a quick little background. So here's, Louis is a, uh, a DJ, his credentials, um, and I'll throw some stuff out there and you can hop in at any point. Like, Louis back in the day when country dancing was in its craze, uh, owned a country bar up in New England. He has been a top West Coast Swing DJ, DJing things like the US Open, Grand Nationals, Mad Jam, and everything in between. Um, on the country side, he has DJed at the UCWDC Country Dance World Championships and all the local events. And the Line Dance World, all the biggest Line Dance events, uh, JG2, the Line Dance Explosion, World Dance the, Masters. World Dance Masters. Um, so on any of those worlds, you probably know who Louie is, but most of the time these guys are just playing music and we sit back and we either like the music or we don't and then we complain online about it. <laughs> and Louie and I have been friends for 20 some odd years. 22, 22 years. 22 years, since 99, 99 2000? Something like that, yeah. Um, and 90. so, yeah, so tell us, a little, what, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your background. Give us some mm. history. Uh, history, uh, history. Um, Got to give it to my cousin, Charles Moan, who started me in the DJ business because he came out of the Air Force and had a good sound system. I did <laughs> not know he, this. Yeah, he wanted to be a DJ. So he's like, I want to be a DJ, I want to start a DJ service. I need help carrying this stuff. I was 14. So um, he started Tunes to Go, and we started doing DJing weddings and Jack and Jill's. Jack and Jill's are private parties for people getting married, if you don't know what the Jack and Jill is. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. You know what Jack and Jill's are. In a competitive sense, yeah. yeah. But Jack and Jill's in New England is a party for a bride or groom to have get, raise money so they can have Actually, get married. Gotcha. That's why I'm begging for money before GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then uh, that started off, and then he became a DJ at a local nightclub, and they needed a Sunday night DJ. And they needed somebody, and they asked if he was over 21. And I said, Yeah, he is. I was 16. He's not over 21. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> And that became, but I learned a lot from the guys who came in from out of to Boston into Lowell, Mass, how to beat mix and do that stuff. Then from there, had some fun, got out of there, went and some other things, and then um, later on in life, came back to GG with my friend Eric at a local nightclub called the Club Graffiti, where we had some good times doing Top 40 for many years. And I met Joe Rogan, your, your star at the That's Dick right. Doherty's yeah, yeah. Comedy Funhouse. He used to Back play Dick Doherty's Comedy Funhouse in Drake at Mass. And then from there, I, we started that. They started country dancing upstairs or in 1989, I think, something like that. So how'd you get involved in like this world that most of us know, right? The, the event the, the world. Event. Let's... 1998, I was in Loudoun, New Hampshire. And James Gregory of JG2, Align Dance World, came to do a workshop. So I got up there, my friend said, you gotta see this guy. I said, okay, I'll come see him. I go up there and I see this very tall, skinny guy have, trying to lift something out of his truck. He was having struggling with a, to a tote. So I went and helped him carry it in. He went and he went in business. And also all my ladies who I DJed at this local, I mean, this place was in the middle of nowhere. New England? Loudon, Loudon, New Hampshire, right, right. two hours from anything. <laughs> Nothing around, squirrels. Couldn't find this place, okay? <laughs> The moose <laughs> took over the parking lot. Like that. Um, so we're in the middle of nowhere. And then, so the girls, all these ladies, like, Louis, we want to dance. Go play some music. So, of course, I went up and started DJing. And I'm playing music and calling off the dances. Boom, boom, boom. And he was watching me. And I had no idea he was the guy who helped lift, lift carry this stuff in. I had no idea who he was. Gotcha. 
All of a sudden he comes up to, to take over, and I said, do you want me to run the music while you teach out there? And so then he wrote in back about the booth, and he's like, what should I shoot for? And uh, before he came out, I hit some huge music, um, no, no limit by Twilight Zone, bam, 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 bam. ladies and gentlemen, from North Carolina, give it up for James Gregory. And he went conniption. He was like, oh, that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. He never in his life got intro or anything like that. But from then on, I spoiled him because he always wanted his intro. He couldn't stand not having an intro. Which, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, oh, sorry. Well, he came up the originally designed to meet some other friend of mine who will be nameless, uh, who got, got stoned and didn't bother showing up. So <laughs> he missed his opportunity to come and DJ at his JG Marathon because he asked me, hey, I came to meet some other guy. He never showed. Would you like to be my DJ at my marathon this June? I went, I would love to. Why not? So that came about. And I went down there and had never been to an event. Never seen an event. Never been to an event. Walked in. And he tells his, and he's had this event going for six years, and he tells all his other so-called DJs, um, <laughs> we'll get into that, um, this is Louie, and he's in charge. <laughs> I was like, okay. And we've been in trouble ever since. We've <laughs> been in trouble ever since, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's that how it all started. And then from there, I met Cindy Neal and Josie and, and every event from there. So the line dance world was the entry. Entry into the and then what was the entry to the swing, swing world? world? That was simple. I walked. It was probably one thirty in the morning at Josie Neal's event. I was walking. I just got finished the line dance room, and I was walking by the swing room, and there was uh, a friend of mine, Mr. John Lindo. Um, J L in the John house. John Lindo was in the room. He had a bunch of people sitting around him talking, chatting. He was sitting in this huge comfy chair. Now back then, we used CDs, so in the line dance, I was standing up the whole time running around, box of CDs, cases. John was just sitting on a, t a chair, big, huge, comfy, padded chair, playing music, and the CD was playing, but he wasn't paying attention. The CD was just playing the whole CD. And he was just bothered gathering and talking, and he'd shoot the crap over here with some people, and there was food all over his table, and I looked at it and says, I want his job. <laughs> I go, my job takes a lot of work. That's an easy job, I want that job. So the next two years, I watched and studied, and unlike you guys today who have, was it Soundhound and Shazam, yeah, yeah. Shazam and all that stuff, when I heard a song I liked, I had to learn the lyrics, go to Gonix Records on Merrimack Street yeah. in Little Mass, search through the lyrics of songs and go find that song, okay? So, yeah. Let's no. kind of add some context, right? Because when we became friends, we've been friends for over 20 years, and yeah. I remember Louis would, so for those of you guys who are around nowadays and some of you guys who've been around for a long time, like back in the day, Louis would go everywhere with a suitcase full of music. No matter where we were in America, outside the country, a suitcase full of CDs, of CDs right? So it was a different era, but the people who started with, with CDs back in the day and the lack of access to music that we have now, it's a completely different world. Oh my God, so much, so much, so different. Like, I have a hard time with them because they didn't have to work at it. Like my whole life, I would, you, know, you had to work at it. Right. You know, you had to dig, dig the ditches first before you became the full man of the job, you know? Yeah, yeah. These guys, they shazam well, everything, they have a computer. So When I started, I carried 19, 19 milk crates of albums. 19 milk crates to do one four-hour wedding so or party. You what is, that? if we talk today about, like, because we've had this discussion, right? Like I say, I can get 80% as good as you with a laptop and a playlist. Yes. What is the big difference? And let's talk generally first, and we'll get specific into, like, events versus social dances in local areas. And we want to get practical with you I, guys. You know, I knew you were going to ask me with that question. Because, you yeah. know, and I thought about this a lot. And it's instinct. Truly, I mean, you can have talent. Okay? You can have knowledge. Yep. Knowledge is key. You have to know your music. No matter what genre you're DJing. No matter what you're DJing. You have to have knowledge of your music. What do you mean by knowledge of your music? What songs? Like the, the genre you're in. If you're playing 50s music, you need, you need to know 50s music. If you're playing R&B, you have to know R&B. Right. If you're playing West Coast Swing, you have to know West Coast Swing. If you're playing line dance. Right. If I'm playing ballroom, I need to know ballroom. The speeds, the things. You need the knowledge of that style you're DJing. And how does that, most. How does that apply? Like, let's, let's, let's start little and go, like, what if I'm a dude and, like, we run a dance here in Louisville, Kentucky, or we did pre-coronavirus, right? <laughs> and so what's the... What's the the thing that people can take away from the playlist DJ, right? That'd be me, right? I load a bunch of stuff in and, and all that stuff. Like, what, what's the, what can someone who just has a playlist like me gain? What do I need to do to become the rock star DJ? That's a deep question. Yeah, it is a deep question. Um, for, 
to, to not go into too deep, first of all, play what makes you grow, okay? It's not so much playing for yourself, but try, try to think of like, if I play this song, does it make me want to dance? Your uh -huh. job, I don't care if you've got to play the hokey pokey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your job as a DJ, plain and simple, is to fill that floor at any given time. Right. That's your job. Unless you're at a bar and the bar owner demands that you slow things down to make, his, make people go to the bar and get drinks, you, you'll actually have that sometimes. They'll tell you to do certain, bring it down, get the people off the floor. That way you can fill the bar up, then bring them back, get them out. Gotcha. And that's, in a, that's like a more in a nightclub that's scenario, definitely which definitely. for most of us watching this are not. Yeah. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please shoot them out. We will cover. There's a couple things that are uh, hot points that I know that I think that I want to cover, but um, we'll just let this go however it goes. <laughs> yeah. And when you're watching this back, we will link all of the, the key moments up in the bottom. Miss Megan will link up the links to the specific things. So, like if we talk about, we've talked about a social dance, like... Let me, a random question. What is a California mix? Okay, California mix uh, came to, it, it's what I know is a California mix is because somebody many years said, hey, I want you to play a California mix. And they named it because so supposedly somebody around the line, California did it this way many years ago, which I think is a piece of load of crap. I'm telling you right now, it's a load of crap. <laughs> because we've been doing that mix in New England for many, many years since I started before those guys, California knew what it was. Remember? Uh, Plymouth Rock, baby. Boston. <laughs> we are first. Before California, there was Boston. <laughs> yeah, so Allison, a Allison, asked a question on, Allison asked a question on Facebook. What so advice? The Boston you, mix. What, <laughs> <Robert>. <laughs> what advice would you give someone to expand their DJ cap capabilities in a social dance event? So let's use this mixing. Give me, give me an, because we did this. We have a local dance, and it was a swing and country dance. I wanted to, you know, blend the two together. And so Louis provided some background knowledge on how to mix that. So explain to me the California mix that you did for us and why the two steps in West Coast and others went together the way they did and how that worked. Oh, okay. Two step in West Coast. Generally, the most social dancers in our world, in our world, okay, yep. if you're crossing country, country and, swing. and swing together, yep. is the two step swing and then now to slow it down to give you a breather nightclub two yep okay waltz is huge but it takes a lot of technique for waltz sure more more so than sure. nightclub two i want i think yep. some guys said because you get that whole rise of bullshit um, <laughs> you'll have a hard time that heel toe lead whatever it is okay so um and then again there's a lot of good waltzes which is a lot of yeah, Vinies, especially in country, Vinies, a lot of Vinies in country. Yep. So not a lot of great waltzes when you come to the country side of it. Nightclub two, again, now you're talking two different schools. Pretty sure I'm I go Kim. So Above 76 beats per minute, full of 76, 76. So what do you? How do you mix two step West Coast and other? I, I mix them to and why? The Explain flavor. that mix. Explain that mix. This fast, slow, slow okay. three West Coast two two steps. Okay, I do. I do a slow, medium, fast two step because. Slow, you have beginner two steppers. Two, so, two, three. So. Give me, give us the rundown of what the songs are. I mean, label songs. No, no, no. Like what? Fast, medium, slow. Oh, like slow, starting slow, with slow, 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 slow two step is anything from about one forty-seven to one fifty-five, give or take. A medium is between one sixty-eight to one seventy-seven, and a faster is one eighty-two, probably one ninety-two. Anything okay. faster than that is your championship. Ridiculous. Um, yeah. you're, you're I don't like to dance. Miss Megan likes masters, to dance that masters, fast. I don't masters, like to dance that masters, fast. Masters, yeah. that's, they dance at 194 to 202 sometimes. 196. Yeah, yeah, that's about that's a master's level. That's not a social. It's not a very good social because no. it makes people want to, especially if you, if you have a pack no. floor. No. So yeah. what, give me the give me the breakdown. If I'm running a country and swing, what's the what's the breakdown you gave to us and explain that? West Coast, West I Coast, West Coast. I give you two steps at the beginning of the night to two to three, um, to three to four West Coast swings. Okay. That gives you an even base for both your country and your non-country people because you have groups that like. So you're starting the day. We're getting real practical for the DJs who are on to dig yeah. in. Like this is real. So like you I start always, the night. I always start the night. I always start the night right up right away with a two-step, a nice slow two-step just to see who two steps. Interesting. That'll give me my basis just to see. That's the first one. Then I played my medium two-step. Now, if my medium two-step kills the floor, I will not go to the fast two-step. I merely go to the West Coast swing. And a nice medium West Coast thing around 104, 106. Can I stop right there? Yeah. So like you're starting with the purpose of, if I put this in a social dance perspective, right? Like I'll dance, room. yeah, I'll dance. 
basic patterns, add some turns, and I level it up because I'm trying to figure out what my follower can get away with or not, and that's going to set the tone for the rest of my dance. Exactly. So you're you're setting a couple. Your first couple songs are like a little test. T testing like, out, testing out. Until the one. And it's testing out through now because you're not going to have a full room right away. Maybe you're starting. If you're starting at most nights, start at seven o'clock. The real crowd doesn't come until maybe eight eight thirty. So you're just testing your room, seeing. You look into the groups. It's all about room. Room reading is wonderful. Most DJs nowadays are in their laptop. Oh, they got a playlist already made. That's when you were talking about people who already have the playlist already. Yeah. Uh, will fail because you have to be on the fly. You have to be able to to make this thing work. You have to okay. That group is all together. They're dancing together. That group is over here. You have to read that room systematically in under two minutes. One song. I got one song. Boom. So what's the system? If you know, Allison said, what can I do to be you? You're playing a couple of songs mm -hmm. in a couple of speeds just to get to gauge the room. To gauge the room to see what what they're. Uh, what, the, what, the, what their level is, by how well they two-step, yep. um, how friendly they are to each other, if they're, if they're an interactive group, if they're just clicking. Fantastic, you can see if they're, yeah. if, if yeah, yeah. they're clicking and staying together. Um, to see who is the leaders out there. The guys yeah. that are on the floor just jump around. The, um, the ones that know all the dancing, that know the two-step, the West Coast, the nightclub, that, that do know a variety of dances. May not be very good at all of them, but at least they have a, generaliza a generalization of all of them. So they'll be your general leaders of always, hey, I'll put this on for them. Right, right, right. Trying something new. And in a, in a social environment, in a true social when you have a small group, stick to songs people know. Don't go try to find that song that you just heard on the radio. Now. Yeah, yeah. Stick to music they know, you know they know, they know they love. <clears throat> Basically stay with stuff they know. If you try to experiment, and one song. So see how it flies. Here's and an have a really big floor filler after. Here's an interesting thing that you've been doing for a long time that I don't think people know. You would keep a folder of specific dancers, like key dancers that you would know in a particular area or community, and the songs yes. that they like. Yes. Like explain that. Um, my mind's going. I'm kind of old now. <laughs> and <laughs> in a laptop, a laptop is very simple. <laughs> I could. I used to keep all that stuff up here, just in general sense, with my CD collection. Yeah, yeah. I used to keep that. Now I put that to, on the laptop as a file, but I actually have the songs in the folders of songs that the dancers like or dance. So you would pay attention to key dancers, oh champion dancers. I don't go. And, I don't necessarily go and ask them like, "Hey, what's your favorite song?" That's bothersome. I don't like to bother anybody. I don't ask. But I've never. I've never asked. Anybody, anybody dance? Yeah, but you're but you're watching in an event. You're watching who the key social, social dance, dance people, the staff members, those two people. What and, they're dancing, what and, they're dancing comps. Not just what they're dancing, but how they're dancing it. Because sometimes they could be just out there dancing because they have to dance required. I want to see if they're going to the floor. They're grabbing somebody to go dance this song. They enjoy. They're enjoying the dance. They're facial. I'm watching their body language as they're dancing it. Are they just out there going through the motion? Or they out there because they enjoy and, the song. And you're keeping a, literally a, these days a list of those songs tagged under the particular people. Yes. So if you're dancing in your like if you're DJing your local community, if you're here in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, Ben behind the camera is the guy that's social dancing all night long, you would pay attention it's to what Ben likes. is digging and likes. Yeah. And if I'm going to be a social dance, if I'm going to be a social DJ at it, which Go is ben. really Go ben. no, it's really it's, and especially at your own home club. It makes it even easier. You know this guy's in your back every week. Well, why wouldn't you watch and pay attention to what he likes? And when he comes in the room, you're right there playing his favorite song. And all of a sudden, I'm, I guarantee you, after about two or three weeks, the guy will notice that, wow, when I get in the room and I'm ready to dance, I, feel, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing my favorite song. There's so, a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? They'll notice. Walter asked this uh, on Facebook. He said, like, if you feel that a song isn't working, do you let it play out or do you phase it out and move to another song? So what do you play a song that's a dud? Like you make your next call and the song's a dud and no one stands up. Do you, do you play it out or do you kill it early? Um, I, I, if it's in a small, small session, small room, room size, it means everything. Room size, if it's a small place, um, I'll find a fade out point and go into another, you know, I'll either mix into another song. Or, Why is that different than a big place? Because um, a big place, even a, because even when, I, well, unless the floor is absolutely dead, a big place. I would a big place. It was always still people there. Yeah, you have, you have a captive audience. Because okay. even if a song sucks, somebody's gonna, some people just are the, the rhythm of the dance to anything. They don't. They can't. Even a good song, they're they're bad dancers. So a bad songs they're gonna dance bad. <laughs> sometimes I just like to play a bad song to get that. I sometimes have people in my view. This is a true statement. I'm not lying to you. 
I'm, I'm in a DJ booth and I have to watch bad dancing all night long. <laughs> so when somebody's bad dancing in front of me, I'm talking and they won't leave and they keep dancing. <laughs> I will play a two step, even though I don't care what it is, just to get them out of my view. Because I'm like, oh my God, I need to get in if they know two step and they come back there. Trust me, a nightclub will come on next. Something. <laughs> I will go so far to play a line dance. I played the wobble just to get that person out of the room. It happens. I'm not lying. I will, uh, uh, my ass are hurting. I'm done watching this person dance off time. It's making me die. I don't want to see it anymore. Get out of my view. That's what my friends and people, my friends know. If they hear a two step, they look in front of me to see who's dancing in front of me. Like, who's bothering Louie? Oh, that's and fine. I have nothing that's, to say. Yeah, I, I, got, just, I, I can't take it anymore. Like, I got nothing to say. It's. it's Let's cover, yeah, we'll get back to that, Kelly's question. I got you, Kelly, we're coming back. But I want to get to, like, um, requests. So we've had this discussion a couple of times on requests. So if you are at, do you get requests at Mad Jam? No? Um, I request from Dave not to play so much um, my, 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 my church music on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, yes, I do get, I get requests. So if you're the big I, event. I, I enjoy, I am probably the only DJ that does enjoy requests. Because I have access to almost every song on the on the world, most DJs don't like requests because they don't have access to all the songs. Right. Well, nowadays most of us, if we're if we're pretty good, we have access, right? But so, it, but yeah, let's explain the practicality most of. Most of them aren't that good. Let's explain the practicality of requests, and this is, gets into some interesting stuff. Like, this is something I didn't understand, but now it's burning my mind. If you, in an hour we got a let's say it's a three hour dance, right? We're gonna go eight to eleven in a local place. Eight to eleven. Three hours. Yeah. So we got three hours. How many dances per hour? How many songs 15. per hour to get? 15, 15 to 17 songs. No, songs, depending how long they are. Yeah, so no more than 18 songs an hour. So in a three hour dance, you got what? Uh, like I said, I basically. 55 ish. 45. 45. 45, 45 to 50 dance songs. 45 to 50 songs. It's like 60 songs in four hours, 60, 70 songs in four hours. Yeah, so it, if you have an event that has, let's just say 300 people. Yeah. Now and you're talking line dancing. Anything. Okay, okay. Anything, okay. right? You got, you, got, yeah. you got 300 people in the room, and then you got a. Let's say it's a social dance event. We're going to go from 10 to 2 in the morning. You got four hours. What's that? Okay. 60, 70 songs. 60, 70 songs. Right? Yeah. And you got how many people in the room? We got 300. hundreds, 300. And, and, that's, a, a small, and that's a small event. And 100 people make a request. Not everybody's going to get the request. It's a mathematical impossibility. So for those of you guys make a request, we've had this discussion a lot off camera, a lot. It just can't happen. It's, it's literally impossible, right? So if 20 people make a request, that's... Well over an hour's worth. It's, a, it's forty minutes of music, right? Yeah. Forty-five minutes. And now, and now depending. No, it's what, an hour of music. And depending what's, where, what style you like talking. If you're talking a swing, are those twenty songs good? Yeah, that's you know, a whole yeah, different story. Some, like I said, sometimes you've got songs. People request songs you don't know, so you have to actually go hear it, listen to it first, decide where it's going to go, where, and then decide where it's going to go in your, in your set. Yeah. To make it work. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've had people at four in the morning come and ask for a song. That's 138 beats per minute. You know, something like super fat. I'm like, and that's because the Grand Nationals, you got a lot of shag dancers coming in and they want to dance with the West Coast Swing people. They don't understand the swing people don't really want to hear a song over 100 beats per minute at three in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, but they still, their feet, little tapping feet, shag feet want to go. <laughs> and so how do you right, mix? Right, Autumn? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> is Autumn even watching? Um. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, so she's wh- awesome. I love her. Uh, yeah, so those of you guys who are making requests, right? You gotta, you have to understand that that song has to then fit. And assuming it's a reasonable song, anyways, has to fit in the mix. Talk to me how you go fast to slow in a night. Like, what's the, what's the BPM range that you? We're, we're, Depending on where you are in the night. Okay, so let's take. Let's, let's, let's talk an event. A big night, go. early, mid, and late night. Let's, let's talk. Why don't we talk? Why don't we stay? This is West Coast Swing Alliance standardized, but let's, which let's is, go West Coast Swing. Yeah. Let's stay this West Coast Swing. See, West Coast Swing. Okay. So, in the general sense, we would love to dance at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Unfortunately, it does not happen at all events. But let's just but say we're should. starting it early. Should. Let's it early night. Let's say 10 o'clock. Let's What's 10 going o'clock. on? 10 o'clock is your, is your early time. So, you're going to start with your songs in the mid range between 104 to 116 in that area, bump, 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 playing around. You're not going to take them to bedtime music. You don't want to go, you know, El Bouchard, bedtime. It's not going to happen. You need to, go, you need to keep them up and stay awake. Now, at around midnight... Well, let's, let's, talk, let's talk in that range. Like, cause explain, see, the, explain the difference between a high energy, like a 110 or a 105, 
high energy song versus a low energy song because it could be the same beats per minute, but one yes, can like, keep like, the energy. Okay, I'm gonna take it to an instance of like Shady. The song Shady. Shady is Love that song, our swing team song. Yes, yeah, so it's 100 ago. beats per minute, but it dances or it has a it speed has of, energy, metronome yeah. of 106 to 109, give or take. Yep. Your metronome. Um, that's another thing we'll talk. You can talk all that stuff as a child, how to do that. Um, but um, you can take songs like Love on Top by Beyonce. Now, 94 beats per minute, but it plays like 101. Because mm -hmm. she goes eight octaves within the song as it travels. Now they're using that, that other guy singing, which is horrible because he doesn't do anything for the song. She puts so much into it, you should use Beyonce. That's just me. She's the queen. She's the queen. She's, I mean, six, eight octaves in a song. Queen. Give me a break. It's amazing. Um, then you have um, other songs that, that even though they say, um, what is it? Naturally by Toby Light, Lightman is 107, but it plays like it's 102. It's very, wah, 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 very, very natural and stuff like that. Yeah, so paying it's attention. It's a nice song, but it's very. Has Paying attention to the beats per minute and, mu and, and energy levels of the song matters. matters yes. So that's almost as much of an important way of breaking down your music, fast, medium, slow, yes. is yes. energy high, energy low. Um, and so, okay, so that's, like, we're talking beginning of the night, middle of the night, so beginning of the night you're at... You want to keep the people up and moving. Energetic. You don't want to kill them. You don't want to kill them. Because remember, you're at a swing event, if you were the only DJ, if you were the only DJ for the entire 12 hours, Span from 10 o'clock till 6 in the morning. Fine. Do whatever you want. But you're still responsible for holding that whole group together. They yeah. want this whole room to stay and people have fun. If you and what, I, what like to, we like to call blow your wad, um, <laughs> which means you do all your best songs in the first hour and then you're stuck. Oh my God. Um, what am I going to play for us tonight? Uh, yeah. You, you kind of did it, Tony. So you, you got to, you got to like go over and. You know, you have a team, so you let it go out there, and you 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 just you, you don't just play everything all at once, so nobody has anything else to play. You try to fill it up throughout the night. Like this guy has this, this guy has this, this guy has this. You know, you try to be a team player as your as your whole night of DJing goes on. If you're if you're with other people, so, so you don't just you don't just steal the, everything and play everything all in your set. What's the goal? Like, continue. What's what's midnight? Like mid mid midnight range. is everybody going upstairs to change. Midnight is a weird time now. Because midnight is everybody running, they're either running to the bathroom for the last call or running upstairs to change into a late night outfit or shoes or something like that. Yeah. So you want, now, you, now you're just going to play, I'm going to say your crappiest music in a sense, the music you don't want because it's just, it's just to keep people dancing, but you're waiting for the crowd to come back around 1.30. Okay. They really are. They really yeah. are. Getting something to eat. They're running, this is what normally, this is the normal cycle at most West Coast swing events. Between 12 and 1.30, they're changing, eating, drinking in an upstairs room partying and they're going to come back downstairs so that dj right there has the hardest session because he's trying to keep the people dancing but he can't play the most popular songs because he knows they're just wasting it and it's going to get replayed by the guy at the two o'clock shift right and so what happens late night what's the this is the smaller of the group yeah, like the what goes on late night too, too many people don't understand late night and they go right into it i mean and nowadays the, prime time is now 1.30 to 3.30, 4 o'clock. That's your prime time now. Okay, that is not, sorry, Deborah, late night. That is prime, okay? <laughs> so that's when you're still playing a good sense of speed and stuff like that. After 4 o'clock, now it becomes late night. Cool groove late night. I'm, I'm sorry if you're old and you can't wait till 4 o'clock. That's not my fault. Okay, the West Coast Swing World changed the whole dramatics of the clock from 8 o'clock, brought it up to midnight, brought it all over and changed your whole clocks, Rachel. Before, back in the day, with all the other Maori and all them, they would come out at 2 o'clock stone and they would dance all night long. But now the clock has changed and now it's after 4 o'clock, okay? So, yeah, no, I'm not worried about it. Weed, and what's, weed is legal. And what's going on? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> in most places. What's, and so what's going on late night? What's the goal? Like, if you're at the end of a night, and let's, let's do this the in goal two, is, the goal let's do right in two is, ways. Two ways, right? The end of a, of a night dance at an event where it's just dying off to the breakfast club, which those are the that's, 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 that's what it's more now. It's now, is now after, four, after 4 or 5 a.m., especially after 5 a.m., people are now, now they're, they're there. They're staying up. Purposely to make the 6:30 Breakfast Club. That is their goal. They want right. to get that last, that late night picture, close the thing down. Yeah. Which is funny because we were at um, 
where were we? Matt, was it Matt Jam? Yes, yeah, so it was Matt Jam recently. And Kyoshi, I can't say his name, I don't know if it's his name. He's a good friend. Kyo, Kyo, whatever. You know I can't say his name. Anyways, <laughs> he knows who he is, he knows I can't say his name. I never, I never <laughs> he was playing, and he could have played, kept going, because he had a full room. I was down there, I came down for my floor trials, and he was rocking it, and he could have totally gone past 8 o'clock and kept going. Because we didn't, have, we had like two people for floor trials, so that didn't happen, even happen until nine, right. and but it would have ruined the Breakfast Club. So they they literally almost forced him to shut down because they wanted to get that picture, and you know, shut it down, shut it all down, shut it down. And he he could have, he could have. That's going on now. But they, you're I mean, watching this. Shut it had, down. He had to do a hard shutdown because he had to clean the room anyways and stuff like that. But he could have if he because he had he had a crowd there that could have played for another two hours easily. All right, so Kelly says, do you prefer playing line dance events, country events, swing events, or the clubs? Um, pick one, I'm gonna make you pick one. I'll pick one, swing, easy, swing, it's easy. Pick one. You can one. do my eyes closed. Swing, because it's easy. What's the hardest? Line dance. Choice. Line dance. Huh? Easy choice, yes, or just easy to do. It's easy to do, I can do it with my eyes closed. I, I can do it watching a video tape, I can watch play a video game, Watch a movie and DJ West goes swing all the time. And explain, time. explain, because I started as a line dance and that's how you entered oh, this world. Swing is easy, because all you have to do is play good music. Yeah. Just play good music. These people want to dance. There's no ifs. They, don't, they, don't even, they won't even know you're in the booth as long as you're playing a good song. You play a crappy song, you'll know it right away, because they'll say, ah! There you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, so in the line dance world, you have to play crappy songs because choreographers choreograph the shit music. <laughs> okay? They'll choreograph the shit that you hear in elevators. They choreograph the stuff that you would change the channel on your car in 10 seconds, but they'll choreograph, for some reason, it inspired them. I don't know what inspired them. It inspires me to take a load of shit in my head, that's all I do. But you know what? That's just, that's just me saying that, okay? Oh, but you, you can agree with it, don't agree, that's not me. <laughs> okay? This is not I mean, turning I, out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. I love, no, I love my line dances. I do, I love them. But honestly... <laughs> Mona jumped in and said, oh my God, it's true, Louie. <laughs> some, uh, some of the music is just horrible. <laughs> horrible. I mean, horrible music, it really is. I'm looking at you, line dance choreographers, picking... I mean, you, you can say what you want. I love them to death. And, but when oh. they pick a great song... But see, they can, take a, they can take a crap song. Like, The Lonely Drummer. It's not a great song, but the dance was so much fun. And the, it made me love the song because it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the dance the actually, dance made the, fun. the dance was so cool and so fun. It made me, now, Gypsy Queen, the guy sings out of tune the whole time. It's a horrible song. The guy is singing off key the entire song. It's hurt my ears. <laughs> so, yes. What? You know it, JP. What? <laughs> JP, uh, yeah. <laughs> he plays, he plays this to hurt me. He make me, makes me line dance. He makes me leave the room. He'll play DJ. It One of the questions that we have there, uh, YouTube and Facebook. Um, so what's, what is incredibly hard about line dance? Because I started in line dance, which a lot of people don't know, and that's your entry to the bigger world. But mm -hmm. that is a really hard um, dance form. Why is line dance so hard? Well, line dance is hard because, A, there's a thousand line dances choreographed every minute. So you have to, and there's, there's like, you have to know not just the name of the song, you have to know the music, you have to know the name of the dance, but it's just not the name of the dance, you have to know the name of the most popular dance, you have to know the name of the choreographer that did the dance because somebody may ask you, because sometimes they, they all use the same name for the same dance as in sometimes, so you have to know the choreographer, which dance. And then you have to line up, in most cases, sometimes you have to call the dance, like yeah. call, call and count it out, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. Now, today, not so much, we've been really milk, like really trying to, Get out of that because now we have the chart and we can um, put the dance stuff there. No, we have the dances labeled up on the board. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the dancers know ahead of time what's coming up. So they're basically little little drones. They're little ants now. They look at the board go, uh, and they, they're well, zombie. Let, let, they walk on the floor. Let's, I could ch if I change that song without changing that board, they'll start doing the dance just because they've seen it. From, even if it's the wrong song, they don't so, know. So, Vivian, I've got you. Um, we're we're going to come back to the favorite line dance. But, uh, so let's answer Vivian's question. What are your current favorite line dances? I don't have one. My, yeah. current, my, my favorite line dance, I haven't learned to learn line dance since 2010. What is your favorite all time? All time, right? Have Fun Go Mad, easily. Yeah, yeah. me too, yeah. me too. Easy. Me have too. Have Fun Go Mad will always be my Have all Fun time Go favorite. Mad, shout out to Scott Blevins. Blevins. Bam, Scott Blevins, the Have Fun Go Mad. Shiznit, I love that guy. Um, no doubts. Um, <laughs> ja for Jack and Jill. <laughs> What's that? 
how to, Jen, I'm going to get to your question in just a second. Um, <laughs> Jen's watching. Um, Gordon asks, for Jack and Jill's, <laughs> um, how do you choose the songs for each level for Jack and Jill's? Ja so we're talking about Jack oh, and Jill's Jack and Jill's. How do we choose songs for each level? Um, for most DJs, they have a playlist ahead of time. Me, I do it on the fly. I play one song. I usually start, I usually start medium speed is always their first song, and then slow, and then fast. Always end with energy. That's me. I just like always ending with energy. Right. Three song, if, it's, if it's three songs set. Um, now, I'm not going to say I require you to play blues or no DJ request. Right, right. But I like to throw a blues out there or a R&B song in the middle somewhere or something like that just to make it easy on the judges to force the people to triple properly. That's I'm why you gonna, play the blues song? Okay, gotcha. It forces, it forces them to... Because we've true. remused high-level musicality out of the equation, and we've kind of just settled into a basic song. Bam, 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 stomp, stomp, stomp. That it yeah. becomes dancing. So it makes, it makes the judge's job a little easier, separates the men from the mice, um, <laughs> as it were. That's so why you separate them. Now, I mean, like I said, I'll watch them dance the first song, see if they did it easy, how hard it was, and I'll pick the second song, make it a little harder. Then the third song, maybe harder, depending on the level. Newcomer, I take it easy. I don't, I don't hurt newcomers. They're new, don't want to scare them, make it easy. They're just, make it through. Novice, same exit. They're not. Now, advanced, all-star, my favorites. Cocky, love them. <laughs> Haven't lesson since they became advanced. <laughs> <laughs> and I always, and I, he can ask Mike and all of them, yeah. I love, I love, it's, it's, I bring it back to old days of um, routines. Barry Jones, Robert Royston, um, the, the super fast, like, I'm talking high, super fast songs that you guys would just like die. You do an East Coast. <laughs> you do so, East Coast too. That's why, you jumping East Coast off too. topic of DJing, Jen asks, Louie, what's your favorite Brian B story? What's your best Brian B story? What's my best Brian B story? Is that that I can't legally tell it on. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> As I, I, I enjoy my friend's company an awful lot, <laughs> and, I, and he has a business and a world to live in, and I don't want to ever admire that. What's uh, your favorite PG-13 story? My favorite PG-13, I mean, for me to be there, actually be there, or just um, uh, yeah, witness either to one. witness? There's so many good ones, though. Um, <laughs> 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 but they're not, they're not for PG-13, because most of, my, most of my, this, my stories range around the other, the, other, the, other, the other side of the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> like... Um, Not be, you're making me nervous. What was your favorite part of your RV trip? <gasps> um. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. No, no. The so, favorite part of RV for those was, you guys who was, don't know. was really was when we when we when, the favorite part of RV seriously was when we were most nervous. We, the only time we ever got nervous when we both had no cell service, no oh. Wi-Fi service, and we're seriously lost. Yeah, so, we're in. We were, it was now 11:30 at night. It we, was now if you've never seen darkness. Darkness in the do desert, where your lights are shining out and it doesn't reflect on nothing. It's Death Valley. It's de we're in Death Valley. We saw we were at Death Valley at the Badwater Basin, which is the lowest point in the U.S., like 238, It's 90 miles to get in there. Yeah, so we're down at the bottom of the, and we're watching sunset and all this stuff. So we're coming back out, and there's no, there's like an RV park, like a little bit this way, but that's not the direction we're going. So we take off the other direction, and we end up on the main road. And he's like, "Oh, just pull off on the side of the road. There's no place to pull off." And we have a line of cars behind us trying to follow us. So we're driving the slow RV, <laughs> blub, 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 blub. And all the, the cars are trying to pass us. And we're like, blub, 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 blub. Like because it's dark. Fourth. And it's windy. And it's not a good. And this is, like I said, this is, it's. So we pull up to what? Like, a, uh, we got up to an intersection. We're like, and it intersection. Was a sign. It says, like, there's a town. What was, it, what was that called? Snubble. I it? don't remember the name of it. Oh my God. But, but, it, but there was, we thought it was like a town. It's not a town. It was a. Uh, Three buildings. And what, one of them was an art center. Yeah, it had it had an art center museum, a diner, which looked like a, a, a diner slash bar, which was broken down. Yes, and, and emptied out. And then they had the um, oh, what's that? The four the four K. Remember the people that the triagers were over there. The, the no, no, that was when we got there. That was when we got to the town. Yeah. Oh. So we get there. We're like, we pull over on the side oh, of the road. The, oh, you mean the first town? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. We pull over on the on the. Was the opera? Yeah, there's opera. It was an opera house in it the middle of nowhere, house. but no one there. And there's no cell signal. So we pull over, we're like, shit, where are we gonna go? So we finally, 
I get one bar of signal, and I, and we see a sign Allah that says, has blessed him with one bar. <laughs> <laughs> the terrorist cell phone network. <laughs> We've totally gone off the rails. Here we go. This is normal. And so we get to uh, 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 we get one bar, and we see a sign that says like 35 miles ahead, Shoshone. Shoshone. That's a Shoshone. So we're like, we're gonna go to Shoshone and see what happens. Right, we gotta like, cause it's like a hundred. I don't no, know. No, he had looked up on the. He had one bar, so he looked up in Shoshone. I looked up, and I was like, Dude. Shoshone had an RV park. I was like, it's not a town. Its population is thirty-one, <laughs> but it had an RV park. <laughs> so we drove thirty-eight miles in the pitch black to Shoshone, and we got into Shoshone, and there was an RV park, and we drove past the RV park, and there was a restaurant and a bar on the left, and an empty parking lot. We parked in the empty parking lot, pulled across the street, went to the bar. We're the only two people in the bar. Another dude came in the bar. This is actually good. And like the guy behind the bar said, where's the coolest place you traveled to or some cool story? No, of course we can't say anything because we don't want to brag. Yeah, we got a lot. I had a lot of cool stories. Yeah, we've been around the world a few times. So we I've had a lot of cool stories, but I don't want to share this guy's story, but he had a good story. This other guy, he's like, about, I've been. He climbed the pyramids like and actually climbed up and got a guide and paid him money and like they climbed the pyramid they're like halfway up the pyramid and the police came and put lights up there and they had to hunker down and there was people yelling at him because the like Arabic. the people wanted money to and they hunkered down and the dude told the story so we heard in Shoshone California yep. we heard the story of a dude climbing the pyramids, the pyramids and almost getting arrested and I heard the, sto store, the story in a bar in Shoshone, California, <laughs> where we were the only people. So there's a PG-13 story for you, Jen, yeah. that does not include the Mexican police yes. or the or back the, closet it's, it's in the... Any, no place, yeah, anyways. Bar or any bar or any, yeah. <laughs> this has gone off the rails. Or some, some balcony somewhere. Question on, question on YouTube. What's the question? No. You have a cutoff point for the length of song you're I'm willing to dancing, play. I'm not dancing. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's only so, the if I have to pee, 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 it's gonna play that whole song. <laughs> I need a long time to go pee and run back. So you, you know. So, no. but this, I think, Michael. That, but, if the, but if it's the pros, like I have. But um, this cuts back to the question from Walter earlier. Like, if a song is working terribly, do you cut should, it yeah, off? Yeah, do I cut it off? Yes. And if I have my like my pros sometimes come out and they dance. They have. They're required by the events to come dance for an hour or whatever. Some enjoy more than others, but some do. And, but the problem is, is people, a person is very good. People tend to suck. No, 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 just not the same. A, one person is very, it's very good. But when you have people, people tend to, as a group, they tend to just follow blindly. And you'll have a pro dancing with somebody, and all of a sudden the line will start forming. You know, yeah. and they don't, uh, and they don't pay attention to how long this this guy's been dancing, uh, and if it's hot in the ballroom and it's sweaty, I mean, he or she, it can be both ways. He or she, you know, guy or girl, it goes both ways. So I try to watch the pros dance, and if they're dancing a lot in there out there, I try to cut the song short for them. I find a whole list of songs that are under two minutes, two thirty, and try to cut the song short for them. I also have, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but my Females all have a rescue move in case they're dancing. There's a move they will do, and I know how to immediately fade that song, and they that the so that guy is hurting them, or that that leader is hurting them, or something like that, and I can get them off the floor. It's an yes. They know who they right, Jack. Yes. The rescue <laughs> move. A rescue move. I will show you girls later. <laughs> <laughs> move. Christy says, "What's up, Brian B. and Louie? Miss you. We miss you too." Uh, Christy, uh, so yeah, down the bottom, right there. Honor, honor. So I gotta tell this story. Christy Merker, her husband is awesome. His name is Scotty. Mr. Scotty awesome. B. Yes. Right. So a long time ago, Lou Scotty's just a good guy. Just one of those dudes yes, that you just one of those good guys, right? And so, um, so one time we Nick Louis nicknamed him Mr. Mr. Awesome. awesome, right? So we're because we were talking about what we did today. What What did you do today? Yeah. What so, did you do today? so we said, where Where's Scotty tonight? Oh, well, he's building houses for poor people in Mexico. <laughs> and Louis DJ, and he looks up. He goes, Of course he is, because he's Mr. Mr. Awesome. awesome. That's right. <laughs> so years later, we're at a bar, and uh, maybe with a few drinks, I was uh, talking with Christy and Scotty, and as a goof, I was like, I'm gonna go get the domain name MrAwesome.com. So I look it up. Someone owned it. So I decided, this is the, one of the top three emails I've ever gotten in my life. 
So I, I write to the guy and I was like, I decided whether I was going to write him from my personal email account or my business email account to ask him if I could buy the domain MrAwesome.com for Scotty B. Merker, Mr. Awesome, what we call Mr. Awesome. And so um, I decided if I wrote from my business account, he might think I'm a business and jack up the price. But if I wrote from my personal account and told him the story, it would be good. So my personal email address is SuperstarBrianB at Hotmail.com. I, tr- I just put that out there. Anyways. Um, I'm not that famous. So, um, infamous. Well, let me know. Infamous. So I wrote him. So famous. He's and a, a week Stop. later, I get an email back and it says, this is from the guy who owns Mr. Awesome.com. It goes, Dear Superstar Brian, there is only one Mr. Awesome. I have no time for posers and imitators. Sincerely, the real Mr. Awesome. Which is exactly what you want an email coming from the <laughs> owner of MrAwesome.com. <laughs> so, every, so there you go, Christy. Uh, yeah, no time for posers and imitators. The real MrAwesome.com. Scotty is still Mr. Awesome. He is, he is a for real Mr. Awesome. Yes. Other great emails that we've got from here at West Coast Swing Online. Um, Dear Brian and Miss Megan, you should get a real job because being a dance teacher is a terrible profession and you're a loser so to that guy we said uh thanks buddy for your input but we run a thriving business and we work with awesome people and i work with my mom and our life is fantastic so i hope you have as much fun as we do another one we got was for our cruises which was um i'm trying to cut that we're doing a cruise to alaska in july This is awesome. I got two more. Is this, this, are we talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing a cruise? Yeah, we're doing a cruise to Alaska. Uh, Dear Brian B. of Dance Fun Cruises, we, I'm trying to cut down on my travel expenses. Could you please stop in Vancouver, Canada to pick me up? Because it would really cut down on my travel expenses. The ship leaves Seattle. It leaves Seattle. It goes, so, of course, sir, we'll look into the government. We'll... We'll he talk to. Here. And that's just he had the port too. He had the the harbor. The oh my harbor. God! He gave us a specific that one. And then <laughs> another one was from this year. One of the more awesome ones, and I can't remember her name. Um, Lamar's Lamar's friend. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So we Do you have. have a trophy? Yeah, we have these uh, horse trophies for Derby City Swing. Shout out DerbyCitySwing.com. It's the last weekend in January next year. Um, and so we do a swing event, we have these trophies, because it's Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, we have these horse trophies that are pretty cool. Well, one day we ordered the horse trophies um, for the next year's event, and they sent us like six boxes of horse trophies. What, and it, I, what they can do, like 150 trophies? Do we have 150? What, six boxes, imagine six, like a stack of boxes, yeah. like this big, oh. right? And so one day I was like, okay, we gotta go count the trophies, make sure we got enough for the novice division, intermediate division. So we open the thing up, we cut it open, sometimes the trophies break. So I grab the one trophy, and it's not the full horse, so I toss it. And I grab the next one, I open it up, and it's not the full horse. So I start to inspect the trophy, and they sent me six boxes of just horse's ass trophies. Just the ass. Just the, just the ass. No horse, just the ass. The horse rear. It's the horse, no, the horse rear. The, rear, the rear, rear trophy. The rear end of the horse. The rear end so of the horse. So that was two years ago. Well, this year, we, the, the Derby City Swing has grown quite a bit. We, had a, uh, we used to split all-star and advanced divisions in the same division. This year, it was big enough we had to split them. So, by the way, we have no small event. It's like 600 people. We have a good event. DerbyCitySwing.com. Um, come hang out with us in Louisville. So, we decide for the all-star division, we are going to give out the only horses rear trophies ever in the history of West Coast Swing. So, the three winning top three couples get the horses rear trophy. Well, a good friend of ours, a mom's choice winner, Lamar Wilford, does not make the top three. And he is kind of heartbroken. So, after the event... I think it's his girlfriend. Am I speaking out of turn? I don't know. A friend. A friend. A friend, which is a girl. <laughs> who saw me admire. We have a bow tie contest on Saturday night, and I, Lamar had this badass red and black feathered bow tie, and I really thought it was cool. I love red. I love bow awesome. ties. It was cool. So I complimented. Well, she writes an email, an email after the event and offers to trade a horse's ass trophy in return for the bow tie, which to me, I have six boxes of horse's ass trophies. <laughs> I'm like, I'll send you a box of trophies <laughs> for just for one bow tie I can use. So we gave him the first ever um, Derby City Swing bow tie horse's rear trophy with his name on it in return for the bow tie, which, uh, yeah, there you go. Good emails. Yeah. It was a good, good email. So we get some good emails. We field about 1,000 a week. So if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to send us email 
Brian at westcoastswingonline.com. Um, Whose birthday? Whose birthday? Soraya? Soraya. Hey. Soraya. Happy birthday, Soraya. Happy birthday. So, anyways, we will put some more official DJ information out, but this was kind of fun. We threatened to have this conversation. Oh, we just love chatting. I love to chat. I can talk about anything. Talking. I watch YouTube all day long. That's all I got to do. <laughs> let's not let's not make this political. So uh, thanks to you guys. I know this has been I a, won't let I have nothing here. A good Go Trump twenty twenty. That's political. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Nukes for everybody. Nukes. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Does anyone have any serious DJ questions? This, we really do. We've talked we've wasted a lot of time here, but we do have a resource of uh, a great treasure. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so as a good friend once said, only 3% of the people in the room know how brilliant Louis is, but everyone can tell when he's an a-hole. And that sums up my friend, who is a brilliant DJ. How do you, you describe me to your, 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 your cruise people? So yeah, on a, we do dance cruises, dancefun.com. Um, we do dance cruises when we start cruising again. Um, so and so the best way, and for those of you guys who are looking to hire Louis St. George, if you've made it this deep into the video, um, this is how I handled Louis. I said, hey, everyone, this is our staff. These are all the people that will be nice to you for the weekend. I said, your DJ is one of the best in the business. He plays amazing music. He's my friend, and he's a bit of an a-hole. So we're going to put him in the corner. We're going to put a lot of furniture between him and you. <laughs> if you have any questions, talk to one of us nice staff members, and we will go back and speak Louis and make sure we get your request played. But of course, remember, if there's 150 you requesting music and there's only two hours, 150 song choices, only 30 to 40 song choices available, not practical. For those of you guys dancing in events, if there's eight staff members that you want to dance with and there's 500 attendees, 250 of them dance your role, leader slash follower, it's just mathematically impossible that you're going to get a dance. It's not that that person is a jerk and doesn't care. It's just mathematically impossible. impossible. What was the math we did if, if you had an event with you know, 600 people and everyone got a request? I think, I think we went to like Tuesday. Something like yeah, that. and you started I, I playing music on, on like Thursday. a social dance. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday, everyone would get one request. So now your request would happen at potentially 3 in the afternoon. It would happen at 3 p a.m. Yeah. And, but we all want my song when I want it at 11.30. And it's just physically impossible. Yeah. So I want, I want, I want. I, want, I just want, I want, I just, I just want. That'll be on my gravestone. How many times did you play, did you repeat a song? Oh, here's. On your last cruise, I repeated a song, one song, two songs twice. Just two songs twice. Out so of for five those days. of you guys DJs, we played, we had five or six dances? We had six. 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 Seven, so seven, seven. Seven, seven dances, because eight day cruise. So we had seven dances, a couple hours apiece, 14 hours of music, and Louis incredibly repeated two songs twice, and it was incredible. It was a Halloween dance, and there was just incredible, like, specific music. Um, so for those of you guys who think he's, you're, he's an asshole, you're correct. Um, <laughs> but don't, don't sleep on the fact that he's also an amazing DJ, and if you ask him some questions, you could learn quite a bit. I've learned a lot from a dance perspective about what goes on behind the booth, because a lot of us who've been around for a while, and this is going to be me preaching, we think we know, right? I, uh, before I ever ran an event myself, I thought I knew. I'd been to 300, 320 events in my life. I've seen every part of an event. I thought I knew. I didn't know, right? I, oh, there's volunteers behind the front desk. How many? How many volunteers? How many on at one time? How many do you need for a weekend? I had no clue. Dance floors. I've seen dance floors put down. I had an event for several years. Then I owned a dance floor. I had, the dance floor has to go away when the event's over. It gets drugged back to the, I didn't, who puts <laughs> it away? <laughs> and who puts the truck away? And there's so many parts of these events and dance worlds of things that we don't see. And there are people that work behind the scenes. This guy's one of them in a DJ booth that understands stuff that we don't understand. Um, so it's worth taking the time to have a conversation with him because even after 20, what am I at, 23? 23 years of dancing, um, I learn a lot all the time. I still learn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I, I DJ 35, 36 years. Um, 14, 36, 14, 54. You're 54 now? 54 now. Okay. <laughs> when did you start? I can do the 14, math. 14. 14. That'd be, that's easy. That's 40 years. Right, 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> 
Claude he is, and I still, Brilliant. and I'm still learning different things and different aspects of DJing from different sides. I constantly love, learn. I love to learn. And if you stop learning, you're done. You're done. You're done. And if you think you know it all, no, because you're you, done. You haven't met me. I know it all. <laughs> all right? For some reason, this didn't pop up, but Kat asked for two songs for the EOC tomorrow. I don't know what that means. Do you know what two that means? songs for the EOC tomorrow. What's EOC? I don't know what's, what's EOC. What's EOC, Kat? Fill us in. Evening. Send a text and via messenger to Brian. This evening for suggestions for two good groovy oh. distress songs for the emergency operations center. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 21 Pilot, stressed out. Like 21, pilot. <laughs> 21 Pilot, stressed Stress, out. 21 Pilot, stressed out. Okay. And what's it called? And uh, what is it? What's his name there? The um, police, don't stand so close to me. <laughs> dude, dude, do you know how amazing that is? Do you know how amazing it is? Oh my God, I want everyone to see just that. Just <laughs> that. Just the ability of that. Because she's in the, down in Atlanta dealing with yeah. like emergency stuff. Yeah, she's in there. She's, oh my she's god, in, she's, in, she's in. That's she's amazing. In, she's, in fe- she's in FEMA. She's in. She's relative, locked. relative to this locked. Those two song choices. Yeah. So those of you guys who think we're good DJs, I get out of town. Back time. <laughs> Twenty-one pilots, huh? That's crazy. So on that note, on the brilliance of those suggestions. You can post those two songs on on, the, on YouTube or and link in the link to them on YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> yes, Louis is brilliant. Um, <laughs> Or you can't, you know, can't, I can't film up this. No, I like the other two. Yeah. Or, so at or some, even better, going back, classic 80s, can't touch this. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> 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 oh. the, so, so, okay, so give me, I give me your, on this. your five, uh, I want this, because we're going to put this out somewhere. Megan, put this in a post for Facebook. <laughs> this is hilarious. Five coronavirus song suggestions. <laughs> Write these down. You're, we're going to okay. put this on a post. Hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> This Are we live still? Are we done? Yeah, we're, no, we're live. So <laughs> slowly, so she can write them down. We're going to put right. this in a post. Five. Okay, right at, the, right at the top, 21 Pilots, Stressed Out. That's my favorite. 21 Pilots, like, Stressed Out would be the first song, the first yeah. coronavirus. And then police, number two. The police, Don't police. Stand So Close to Me. Don't Stand So Close to Me. This is brilliant. MC Hammer. MC can't Hammer. Touch this. Doom, 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 doom. Can't touch this. Um, what's his name? Weekend, Can't Feel My Face. <laughs> That's a terrible one. <laughs> that is <laughs> Uh, who sings it? Weekend. That's right. What else? Phillips Phillips disease. I think it's Phillips Phillips. Is it? Phillips Phillips. I thought that was Matt, uh, Matchbox 20. Well, Matchbox 20 did disease as well, but Phillips Phillips is a, a, better, a better swing version. Oh, okay. Philip Phillips disease, yeah. Is that four or five? That's five. five. Boom! Louis St. George, thank you, brother. And uh, we'll put this, we'll actually do a better version of this that actually has succinct information. We need to do a post on the website. Oh my God, I would. For yeah, some, yeah, like, legit yeah, DJ. Yeah, lay down some more, some more questions out there so we, for future reference, because I love questions. I, we will. I would, I would, I would do, and yeah, because I love, and, no, I'll t- and I do privates. We'll do, we'll do. <laughs> Yeah, Louis St. George, just like everybody else, I trying do to. Too. I do. Trying to, I have people that have private people all the time. We're all time trying to hustle a little bit of money, but not us I, at I West Coast Swing Online. Unlike not, other losers, I don't charge a lot because I don't like my. I want my knowledge out there because I think it needs to be shared. So I'm going to die really soon. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> coronavirus is going to take me. I'm out there.